So we've covered quite a few things. Uh, what an airbrush is all about, about how much it's going to cost, why you need an airbrush, kind of what an airbrush does, um, a primering, cleaning your airbrush basically, and mixing your paint. We still have that mixed paint here right in front. So let's actually get to some airbrushing here, guys, and see you know what you can do. So, okay, so I have my airbrush, I have my paint. Or you put the paint in, if it's been sitting around at all, okay, with a wet stick or whatever you want to use, go ahead and mix it up one more time, just to make sure, because dry paint is really your enemy, all right? I'm going to pour it in as much as I can. I want to kind of get away from the sides of the cup. I want to try and pour it in so I hit the where the, the reservoir is at the bottom. So anything that gets on the side is really just going to stick to the side, and you may not get it. Tap it in as much as you can. Okay. Like I said, you're only need about 75% of your paint that you mix in there. There's a good drop of paint left in here. Um, there's not much you can really do about that. All right. So, again, dual action airbrush. When I push down, air comes out. As I pull back, paint starts to come out. Okay. It can be light, like this, barely visible. It can be heavy, all right? It could be fully close. It could be pretty thin. Or if I pull back, it would be rather thick. Think of this as light hitting it, okay? A great way to create shadows is to use an airbrush. But in this case, I want the middle to be green. And I want the bottom to be a lighter color. So we're going to paint from the bottom and the top, but I want the scales to be a different color. So that means what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of at a 45 degree angle up here and start painting, okay? And basically um, spray down at that angle to kind of mimic a light source. So, I'll try to do this as best I can. Pretend you're holding it like this. I'm holding it like this, and I'm going to be spray painting like a 45 degree angle this way. So you can see it, I'm going to lay it down um, this way. Hopefully, we'll better see. Always start painting off of the model. Always, 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 unless you're primering, then it really doesn't matter. So, I always start spray painting off the model. You don't know what's going to come out of this thing when you first push down. It could be a big splotch, and it's going to ruin everything. All right, so again, I'm going to start off at a 45 degree angle, and then as I go, I'm going to actually come here and rotate this up a little bit so that I really get a good side shot. All right, so here we go. Best way to do it, guys, is just to get started. Just go for it. Just get it done, right? And here I am rotating it. It goes rather quick, and I'm getting all the different areas of it, not just what I'm facing, but I'm getting the feet, the legs. All right, good. Doesn't look like much yet. Don't worry. Just like normal paint, it doesn't start off looking like a million bucks, okay? Again, about a 45 degree angle. Get the head a little bit, and then so I'm coming straight at it. You know, this is maybe a little difficult for you to see. I'll do my best here. All right, I'm also going to get the belly because I'm going to do a belly a lighter color. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in here. Be careful how much you, you pull back on this because um, you can get through your paint rather quick. And you can see so far I've had no issues with clogging. And it's like, yeah, you just started. But guess what, guys? You can run into issues that quick. Trust me, you absolutely can. Okay. So now that I've done all this, okay, and the face right here probably needs to be all the way because there's no scales on the face. There we go. I still have a little bit of paint inside here, and that's a good thing. Okay. 
Because what I want to do is I want to lighten a and make a um, an appearance of lighter, more vibrant color from the top up. So like we said, the bottom is going to be a brighter color, but I want to make the same color more vibrant from the top down to give the illusion of a shadow. So how do I do that? Now if you remember, I used this color right here, which is reflective green. It's kind of a darker green. Um, right? That color. So what I'm going to do to make that illusion of a shadow is I'm going to come in with a lighter green. I'm going to put it right in to this. Right in. Start off with a little bit of this stuff. Now this is a Vallejo model air. It means it's pre-mixed. You put it right in here with no problem. I'm going to put a drop of this in because it is a lighter shade of green. Two drops. So I can mix it up and go as normal. Now I know it's a little bit cheating. Uh, because it's already mixed up. So let's go ahead and go in and not cheat and use this garbage right here, right? I'm sorry. This is, you know, hey, good, for, you know, stop. Anyway, so I'm going to take, the way you do it is you just come in here with your brush, you take a little bit, and you put it in so it's on the tip of where the reservoir sits. Because, again, I could do this inside the cup, but since I've already got some in here and I don't want to have this very stark contrast, I just want to have, again, if you want a gradation, you come here and I'm going to do it right inside the cup. Start off with about a drop, whoops, <laughs> of, or two, of reducer. And you're going to mix it up. Now again, this is one of the reasons why, as you can see, I'm a real fan of doing it inside the cup. I'm making a huge mess here. And a lot of this paint's really not going to go very far. Now that right there may be a little light. I think it's a little on the bright side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and darken it up with a drop of the green, the original green that you use. This does a few things. You do have to learn this, and it is something you kind of learn by experience. A real drop, not a bubble. That was a bubble. Um, something learned by experience. When you change colors and you do gradations, you want to use a lot of the base color inside of your mixture. Otherwise, the kind of stark contrast is going to be hard to mask and you have a little more skill to get that done. doesn't mean it can't be, which means it's a little more difficult. If you're not happy with the consistency, so you can always dip your brush in a little bit of water. Go ahead and go in there. All right, so here we are. Again, let me check it. Now, when you switch colors, the color that's actually in the pipeline, so to speak, is still going to be pretty dark. It's not going to be until after you really let go on it like that but you start getting the good stuff or the new stuff okay so make sure that you spray a little bit out and you're like hey that's the same color well, yeah it's the same color because that's what's inside the uh kind of the pipeline that was closest to where the needle opening was so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this because i want to have some shadowing or light effect from above so i'm going to spray this thing from above the best way you can do this really i'll tell you the truth is you put her down Hold it down. There, I'll hold it down like that. And I'm going to take this airbrush and I'm going to start hitting it from different sides, always at about a 45 degree angle from above or even straight above. It's up to you. And I'm going to start getting that gradation effect. Really light, lightly. I'm holding it kind of far back. And the reason I'm holding it kind of far back is because I don't want really fine. Um, lines. I want this to be a very kind of subtle transition because remember close up little tiny lines right far away kind of big slot so I want this to be but again you see how that's very subtle in how it hits I mean it's a small amount of paint that hits everything at once instead of a fine amount of paint that hits a small area which is exactly what I want so again from a ways away I'm going to spray paint the top. I'm just going to airbrush. It's an airbrush. Turn over, get the other side. Okay, and same thing. When you want to get the legs and stuff, you're going to come in and you're going to hold the miniature so that you can basically get at it so that the airbrush is kind of tangent 
for the surface you want to hit. At the same time, it's going to hit those surfaces that are pointing up. Just like that. Turn it around. Kind of see the lighter color transition now. Again, I want to get, I want to highlight these things, but I don't want to hit at this angle. So I'm going to hold it so that this, the airbrush is kind of tangential to it. So I just pick up those, those highlights. All right. So there's some more. Okay. I'm not doing the belly because I want the belly to be a lighter color of the original not a more vibrant green. I want the topper to be vibrant green because that's what sunlight does. It creates a more vibrant color. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this because I don't want this paint that's in here anymore. I'm going to put two drops of water, or four or five. I'm going to dump it onto my rag. And then I'm going to go back in with the really lightest color that we had before, which was this um, moot green, yeah, moot green by Citadel, and I'm going to put quite a bit of it into the pot, and I'm not going to thin it down with too much, uh, mix it with too many things. Again, I still have the darker color in here, so it's going to mix with that darker color, and therefore when I spray it, it's going to have that common color, which is the base color, um, to be able to blend them together. Two drops of our reducer, should do it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, starting off the model. It's the same color that came out before. I'm gonna kind of open it up a bit till I get the light. Ah, there it is. Yeah, light color. There we go. And again, starting from the top, I'm going to spray paint or airbrush. Again, come over here, kind of hit it at an angle, so I, I highlight the bumps and the contours that are facing up. And there we have, hopefully, let's the focus, there we go, focus, there we go. There's some really crazy transitions of the lens as I try to figure out what the hell I'm doing. I'll take pictures of this though so you can see, but hopefully you can see now that it has that color transition. I still need to do the belly. Got to do the belly, okay? Now, like I said before, I don't want the belly to be a more vibrant color of the green. I want it to be a, you know, the base color just brighter. And we all know whenever we mix, and again, I'm going to clear this out the other way. I'm actually going to clean this one out most of the way. Which means that I'm going to um, put quite a bit of water through it. Um, I'm going to wash it out here by the way that I did before because I want most of that mood green out. I want the, uh, just want to start getting the, the base color again. Now, we all know that when we mix white with our colors, our paint colors, we don't get a new color. We get a brighter color of the same thing. Everybody hopefully knows that and really needs to remember that because that's just the way our colors work. So I want the belly to be that lighter color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the base green, the one that we used before, and I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of white. And that's going to give me Again, before you do that, put a drop or two of the reducer in first, okay, before you go in with your color. So I just want two drops, because a little, well, a big thick drop like that. Um, it's easier to kind of play with the white a little bit and not make as much than it is to keep on putting darker colors in it. So always go heavy on the dark colors, it's much easier to brighten than it is to darken. Okay, I'm going to use some Vallejo model here. Uh, white, again, if you do have these things, they do have their uses because it is already thin. Oh, the tip is awful messy. It is already thin. That means if I put this in, um, I don't really need to worry about, you know, keeping playing with the, uh, 
how much it's thinned, how much of the chemicals are in there and stuff like that. Kind of trust it. But again, it's not needed. Uh, it's definitely not needed. But here, for me, I'm going to put one. Probably start with one drop. And as before, you're going to go in with your, your little garbage brush that you have, right? And we're going to mix this up. And it should be kind of a pale color of our original. It's not going to be like that moot green that's very vibrant on top. It's going to be kind of a watered down version of the other color. You can always tell, but stick anything in the paint. That's awful bright. So I'm going to go in with another two drops of white. Remember, you can, or three, or three. Remember, you always have the ability to do a much better transition with an airbrush than you do a brush, a normal brush, so you can there we go. That's what I want right there. So you can see the old color and the new color. Really, really pale down. So we're going to hold it this way. And it's going to be kind of hard for me to do it and still be in the camera. So I'll do the best that I can. Starting off of your thing, off of your model, you're going to go ahead and get it out until you get to the light color you want. I want this to be really slight. This is where the double action comes into play. Going back, and I'm barely going forward until I can just start seeing the stuff start to come. Then, again, I want to be relatively close. Start the flow of paint off. You can even do it on your hand. All right, and then I'm going to start going and hitting the belly. Start the flow. And you can see here as it goes off to the side that I have a light color now on the bottom. It's not all the way done yet, but a lighter color on the bottom. And then it kind of transitions up to that very vibrant color. Okay? To make sure again, make sure you have it done right. Make sure you hit it from both sides or both approaches or angles. I just have a little bit of paint coming out, and it's kind of constant. Making sure I only hit the belly part. Okay. See? It? Very little flow. We'll come back in, believe it or not, with two more drops of white. One, two, or three, or three. Mix it up. Now I have a very pale color in here that's basically tinted green. Or white tinted green. I'm really bare back on it because I want all that uh, other color to come out. So I only want the very bright color. Okay. And I'm going to finish up the belly. Again, starting to flow off. I'm holding it kind of close because, again, I want that color transition around the tail. To be only at the very base. And then I throw it all over the place. But when you're done, again, do you want the inside of the legs to be that same color? If you do, make sure you get it. Uh, I think in this case it probably would look good. So, come in here. Now you do want to hold it somewhat far away because you do want that color to kind of go over and kind of envelop the other the other places and have that uh, that changing effect, right? And I can see that the transition is not as good on this side, probably a function of how I was holding it. Get the air flowing, get the paint flowing, and come in here and get the tail done. Good. 
good thing about airbrushing is always wait for you. You don't always have to go so nuts and try and get the paint out so quick that it doesn't come. Okay, it will come. Give it time. And there we have. It's a little bit hard to see, probably in in the light here. Um, Hopefully that's focused. We have a white belly. The camera goes nuts to try and focus on the white as I pull it away, it gets darker, which is kind of bad for showing purposes. But we have a color transition that is unmistakably green, starting from light on the top. And here on the head, you'll see we have some very nice shadows already done in, and there's very little need for airbrushing or anything on this. So we have done the job we set out to do, which was to make the transition. At this point in time, do we need to airbrush anymore? In my estimation, based on what I want to do, and again, I know this model is a little crappy and it's not properly filled in, and yada, yada, yada. I would say, no, we don't. I think the job that we've done right here is perfectly fine. And I think everything else can be done with, um, with a normal brush. I'm going to do a little bit of a speed painting here after this, and I'll record it of me finishing up this model right here, just the cold one itself, because it's a little difficult to see how effective this um, airbrushing is when you're only looking at it and nothing else on, on the miniature is done. So I'll go ahead and do some more painting on this, and you'll see at the end how effective that really is. Here on the side of the neck, I think it needs a little bit more, like it does on this side. That's much nicer. So we're going to go ahead and come back in. Always take a good look at it before you put it up. So once you wash this out, it may be difficult to get that same, um, that same color transition again, or the same color. And that's really, that's how it goes. That is your airbrushing 101, guys. Um, I know it's been a little bit. I'll try and speed up a lot of this. It's probably a good hour's worth of stuff of me yapping. Hopefully you could take it in stride and kind of watch the other pieces little by little. This one's probably about 25 minutes and probably 20 minutes too long. Um, but that's kind of all there is to doing this technique and what you need to have an airbrush. So um, hopefully this has been of some use to you. If you have any questions, if I cover anything too fast or poorly, which I'm sure I have poorly a few times, uh, sh you know, leave a comment below. Um, let me know what that was. And I'll try and go back and explain it better for you. All right. Again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed. Subscribe. Like I said at the very beginning, um, really need you guys to so give me direction on, on what it is you want because I mean if it's just me it's just me right so help me out help me help you so to speak um, I really appreciate the subscribers especially the first guys that came in and started liking my videos and uh, sharing with other people I really appreciate you guys and uh, take care